The ideas of fiscal and banking union are often suggested as long-term remedies for the euro crisis. Let's take a brief look at why these may not be so easy to pull off. The idea of fiscal union makes good economic sense, and indeed one variety of this idea is what the United States achieved when it moved from its earlier Articles of Confederation to the 1789 Constitution. One advantage of fiscal union is that individual states receive aid from a centralized federal unit. In the United States, for instance, federal payments for Medicaid are one form of this aid. A second advantage of a fiscal union is that you have the largest centralized unit bearing most of the fiscal risk, and this larger unit can pool risk more efficiently. Yet fiscal union in the current Eurozone would be difficult to pull off, largely because the individual nations are still independent democracies of their own, and it appears they would like to remain as such. Let's consider three major problems. One of them is called the moral hazard problem. So, for instance, to the extent the government of Germany or the Netherlands is committed to fiscally bailing out the government of Spain or Italy, the government of Germany, of course, is afraid that Spain or Italy will run up excess debt, knowing that some other set of taxpayers will pick up the bill. You might think, ah, we'll have some centralized European authority control all of the budgets, but that's difficult to square with democratic elections in each individual nation. It's fairly hard to figure out what democracy at the individual nation level would mean if those democratically elected governments don't have the power to set their own budgets. For this all to work, it probably would have to mean some kind of unified electorate and election across the entirety of the Eurozone or European Union, and at the moment that's simply hard to imagine. National governments don't seem to want to give up so much of their sovereignty. Finally, even if this all were both desirable and desired, it would be very difficult to push it through, because as currently constituted, treaty changes are very difficult in the European Union, and treaty changes would indeed be required to bring about this kind of fiscal union. Of course, you'll note there is a European Parliament, but when it comes to fiscal matters, they're really not in charge. What about the idea of a banking union in the sense of having cross-national banking insurance supplied at the level of the Eurozone or the European Union? Of course, if we look again to the United States, the insurance of bank deposits is done by the FDIC, which is at the national level, and it's widely recognized that if bank deposits were insured at the state level, this would be a less desirable and less stable system. Again, this kind of banking union would be a good idea in the abstract, economically speaking, but politically speaking, it's difficult to achieve. The key problem is that banking union tends to also mean fiscal union. So assume that a European Union entity were somehow guaranteeing bank deposits in, say, Italy. The Italian government can always issue a regulation which requires that Italian bank to buy a lot more Italian government securities. If the bank is ultimately being underwritten by Brussels, and the bank is forced to be buying government securities of Italy, then indirectly, Brussels is guaranteeing a demand for the government securities of Italy. And this is one way in which, indirectly, banking union has turned into fiscal union. Here's another way to see how banking union ultimately means fiscal union. Let's say again that a Brussels-based entity is guaranteeing the value of an Italian bank. The Italian government then decides to nationalize that bank. Well, if Brussels is guaranteeing the value of the bank, and the bank is now part of the Italian government, in essence, Brussels is guaranteeing part of the fiscal position of the Italian government. The Italian government can always borrow money through that bank, knowing that it's guaranteed through Brussels. And there's again this indirect conduit through which banking union has turned into fiscal union. So even though banking union on its own makes perfect economic sense, if fiscal union is politically impossible for reasons discussed earlier, well, banking union will be problematic as well. By the way, one final problem with banking union has to do with simply the time it would take to set up really effective cross-border banking regulation. There is now some EU cross-border bank regulation, but to imagine the European Union taking over the details of banking regulation in each and every one of the affected countries, well, that really would take years to put that institutional machinery in place. And right now, it's not clear that we have years to get that job done. Just to sum up, when they're possible, fiscal and banking unions do make perfect economic sense. When people advocate them, they're far from speaking nonsense. 
But that said, it's actually pretty hard to imagine them working for the Eurozone or the European Union as that region is currently constituted as a series of separate political entities with separate elections and separate budgets.